Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And in this one, we will be covering the Affliction Warlock. Should you or should you not main this specialization moving forward into Dragonflight? We're going to be covering its strengths, its weaknesses, its fun factor, and its competitive viability, specifically aimed at PvP here in today's video. Now, with a massive change that Dragonflight recently has received, increasing stamina by 40%, this has benefited Affliction Warlock greatly over numerous other specializations because a lot of its effective self-healing through Drain Life and Dark Pact and Hellstone are all aimed at percentage-based healing. So you're going to be very durable in a lot of these situations. You've probably already seen a lot of Mimi screenshots of Dark Pacts of like upwards of maybe 600,000 um, absorption. You're still bringing forward a lot of the same mobility as you had in the past with the Demonic Gateway. We can see me using here and we also have the return of soul burn one of my favorite abilities that warlock had in previous expansions and you can use this to either soul burn demonic circle and portal and sprint and remove slows and get that extra mobility that you weren't able to get to uh, before or you can use soul burn on a drain life and get this extra shield on top of the powerful self-sustain that it has it's just going to allow you a lot of mobility you can see myself portaling up top getting a mortal coil onto the enemy healer getting them into crowd control getting a massive row of dots onto any everybody on the team I really love a lot of these old school abilities that they've brought back to Affliction Warlock. Things like Haunt, you can see me utilizing it here on the Priest, amplifying all those damage over time effects while still carrying forward a lot of the Shadowlands effects with things like Soul Rot to get you a lot of AoE, high powered drain life, just suck the life force out of your opponents. You can feel the other team kind of rot and withering away as I'm starting to build up momentum onto the enemy team. I would say that this specialization is not super noob friendly. Um, I've been Gladiator on this class uh, for multiple expansions and multiple seasons. It's a specialization that's really close to my heart because I love the Rot and Wither playstyle like this. Like just seeing enemy health bars all at 10% like that, like mm, chef's kiss. Like we, we, we love that. And it's been a really long time since we've been able to get this time of kind of pressure into the game. Um, so I've kind of avoided this specialization for now um, but now with you can see I'd say it's a lot more powerful on the pre-patch at least um, than the actual Dragonflight expansion I think the main reason for this is completely dependent on your opponents some of your main problem points are going to be demon hunters which I'm starting to debate as the best class and of course you want to stay up to date with what's looking like the best and stuff like that I'm going to have tier lists coming out here very soon pumping them out giving you guys a good idea of what's looking strong and powerful and what you maybe you want to aim at in terms of competitive play uh, as well as a fun tier list I'm going to be expanding exploring every single spec so if your spec isn't covered yet it definitely will be at some point but some of your problem points are going to be things like demon hunters because their self-sustain and healing is probably even more powerful than yours is um, with things like summon in demons and killing them off and the soul rend healing uh, it's really tough to dent them and get rot pressure on that target so if you get a solo queue lobby with a demon hunter and a death knight who's also got a lot of self-sustained healing based on percentage healing when they're not on your team it's going to be really tough uh, to build pressure. Uh, and in those situations, you probably want to focus on single target and death bolt builds. Um, now, myself, not having played Affliction in quite some time, wasn't prepared for that uh, to set up all the keybinds to try and make it work. But I feel like it's going to be kind of necessary. Um, now, when there aren't those classes, you are going to feel really powerful. When there's casters like this Ellie Shaman just getting torn to shreds or mages and hunters and this type of stuff, because the Fame Death Legendary has gone away now, uh, we can keep our dots up. You're going to start to cut people down on those specs so it's kind of a give and take a rock paper scissors kind of spec and we'll have to wait and see if there's tuning that comes through i can't imagine that there wouldn't be um, given how powerful the percentage based healing is on some of these specializations um, but you should be aware of that walking into it that death knights and demon hunters are going to be a pain point and death knights and demon hunters are really strong right now in terms of classes but getting back to the warlock more specifically um, and what what to really expect of it is that it feels like a nice amalgamation of multiple expansions of warlock while i'm still not the biggest fan of malefic rapture and soul shard spending um, the return of haunt the incorporations of shadowlands effects of soul rot um, the utilization of dark uh, glare as well as the old school um, drain soul 
with the Drain Soul Execute and Soul Swap making a return. Um, and Soul Swap in this expansion is just going to immediately dot the target with Unstable Affliction, Corruption, and Agony. So three main dots makes it really cool for swapping to healers that would otherwise be kind of too tough, right? Like they're sitting in the back, they're not engaging, really annoying to try and dot them. Well, now with Soul Swap, you can just immediately chuck a full row of dots like I have here under this rogue, toss out a haunt, a soul rot, drain life, and just whoop! They are out of the game. So if you get really good positioning on your opponents and you're able to chuck out all of these massive dots in a small window, you can definitely get a ton of pressure out um, almost immediately um, off the bat. And that's what I really liked about it. I do hope that the Haunt build ends up being a competitive option um, because Haunt is like one of my favorite abilities. I, I think the Soul Burn Haunt effect from Warlords of Draenor, which doesn't exist here, uh, unfortunately, to amplify all your dots, every Haunt you're getting to amplify dots on a multi targets so was super fun mechanic. I really hope that this spell doesn't get tuned out of into oblivion, uh, whether it be for PVE, because I think the spec is performing, to my understanding, uh, at a very high level in PVE. So maybe take that into account as well. You might have some uh, bullseyes on you um, for nerfs potentially, but you can see the main goal of the Warlock is to set up this nest, get a demonic gateway, get a demonic circle, and you're going to kind of just focus around kiting around this. You can see I've soul rotted the druid, full row of dots, soul rot, haunt, dark glare extension, drain soul, just channeling in as much damage as possible, stunning in the druid. We get tranquility immunity from the druid. They're desperate. They drop smoke bomb. Um, if you're able to get a chain of casts in a row, you're going to be a powerhouse. Um, another thing that I wanted to try out uh, into these melee DPS that were attacking me in a lot of uh, solo queue lobbies was casting circle. That might be a way to alleviate some of the countermeasures that I was just talking about previously with Demon Hunters and Death Knights uh, and something to take into account so that way you're not getting constantly interrupted because that's going to be a big deal. And that's why I say that I don't think it's very new player friendly. Um, if you're not able to kite effectively, you're out of in bad positions and getting chain interrupted and stunned, you're basically going to be useless. But if you want a class that's going to have like a really high skill ceiling and when you've min-maxed it, you're going to feel like a god on it, um, then this is probably one of the best specs to go for. So if you're really like a challenge challenge seeker, um, this is going to be one of the best min-max specs because you've always got this effective global that you've got to be searching for and trying to find and choosing between do I should I fear here is it time to crowd control is it time to run is it time to make a swap to the healer where should I allocate my interrupts so like right here interrupting the druid getting a soul rot onto the rogue trying to fear the rogue so I don't get interrupted to go for a drain life drain life in the druid in the back line getting that behind the pillar creating pressure onto three targets swapping to people that are in the open forcing them back onto the pillar realizing if I'm going to push in aggressive I got to move my nest so drop the demonic gateway get in on top of them again and try and out position them as much as possible to keep the pressure that I had just previously built. Unfortunately, that pressure seems to have subsided, but here you can see the soul swap being really effective at, for myself to keep full dots on the druid while I'm still just avoiding the enemy attackers, using a demonic circle here, trying to reposition, using my hellstone, uh, and the sweet souls effect from legion has carried forward into this expansion, so your hellstone on your allies will also heal you. Something to take into account if you're playing with an affliction warlock in solo queue, that you can heal your warlock by using your own hellstone, like right here, my Shaman could Hellstone, and it would heal me. Um, but still, just trying to keep out full dots, looking for Shadow Furies. You can see myself starting to fall behind, so I can use Drain Life um, to try and just suck some life into myself while I'm waiting for Dark Pact, get gripped around by my ally, get a Soul Rot. Soul Rot's going to super juice up uh, my Drain Life and allow me to sort of just stay alive here while we've got the Rogue at like 1% health, uh, and we knock him away. We're so close to finding a victory here, just creating pressure, but we're also falling behind, so intense is going to be uh, the name of the game, at least when it comes to this specialization. So don't walk into this really expecting an easy time, um, I would say as much as the pre-patch, um, because there's a lot of other classes that are super competitive. But look at this. Once you've got a full row of dots on everything, once you let the dampening sink in a little bit, get your teeth in there, you're going to start to see uh, that rot and wither play style return that had previously kind of been lost for the specialization, I would say, for some time. Uh, and that's something that I really liked. Now, Unfortunately, I would say with Affliction is that your other specs are also looking really good. Like Demonology and Death Star are looking really good. And those are kind of the specs that you're directly competing with. But at the same time, if you're looking to be a ranked solo queue player, you're going to climb the ladder based on your spec. So if everybody else is playing the most flavor of the month, which who knows is Destro at the moment, I kind of think I kind of think that it will be uh, unless something changes. Uh, you'll climb the ladder as Affliction and only compete against other Affliction locks for your end of season title. So you could still try and make this playstyle work, fit it in with other classes, and get that reward without having to worry about the other specs, um, even if that ends up being the case. 
So definitely something to consider. I really had a good time with it, except when Death Knights and Demon Hunters were training me and interrupting me. Again, I think switching to Casting Circle Honor Talent would have maybe made that easier for me and spending more time on the class because uh, it had been quite some time since I played it, even though I've been Gladiator on it, uh, would definitely help. It's 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 going to be... A, it's gonna be a, it, tough initial hit when you want to try and play an affliction lock but i'm sure that a lot of you out there that play affliction lock understand that and you're playing it for kind of like the min max challenge uh element of it and trying to maximize every single global cooldown that you've got available to you so if you're that type of player i, I do think that you will enjoy this you do synergize effectively with a lot of other classes and you're benefiting heavily from the 40 percent hp increase that had recently occurred you have a bunch of talents that increase your stamina uh and that's just on top of it. you can see this dark pack shield on myself right now uh, as an example and how fast drain life can heal me when i've got inevitable demise fully stacked up so it's definitely a good time i'd say it's worth checking out giving it a go um, if you're an affliction warlock aficionado but other than that thank you very much for watching the video if you enjoyed it please comment down below with your thoughts is affliction warlock looking appealing to you are you ready for the challenge um and if not let me know uh what you are going to be playing as i'm looking to cover every single specialization and i want to make sure that uh, each and every one of you has all the intel that you need to make the best decision for yourself so i hope that you were able to get that from this video uh, strengths weaknesses pros and cons and other than that thank you very much for watching and i will catch you in the next video